Hello everybody, Manix here. Going to quickly show you an example of the clasp lock in my series of locking mechanism videos. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more knife reviews, more locking mechanism videos, etc. But basically this is a cold steel kudu right here, which is sort of a modern take on the Okapi knife, which uses what is often known as the clasp lock right here. Here it is engaging. It locked in place. Knife will not close until it is disengaged, which is done by pulling up on it to release the tension on it. And there you go. It is back in place. Now the way this works is it's it's kind of like a lock back. It doesn't seesaw, but it is shaped along the spine on the handle, just like a lock back, and it pivots in the middle, just like a lock back. The main difference being it's not subdued within the handle. It's literally a piece of metal, a thin one laying on top of the handle rather than being recessed inside of it. And right here is where it pushes against to keep it in place. It just pushes against the FRN handle right here. And it's constantly wanting to drop down. As you can see, it's almost as if it's sealed against the top of the handle, the top of the spine. But if we look very closely, we'll discuss what this ring is for in a minute, unless you already figured it out yourself. You can see the series of notches along the tang of the blade. And they're concaved inward to keep a round, smooth action. Sounds almost exactly like a ratchet, which a lot of people call these ratchet knives or ratchet locks because a series of notches is constantly rubbing against the opening of the locking mechanism right there. So it makes a noise, and until it clicks, when we finally get to the final notch, which is the deepest one, which is right up against the end of the blade. This notch happens to be the deepest one, so it will not disengage on its own, like these will. That's basically it. Now it's locked in place. The piece of metal just rests back on top where it's trying to. Again, it's constantly pushing down this way because of the way it's shaped, so it's constantly moving down this way, and so that when that space is finally freed up and not being pushed against by the blade itself, it just drops down, just sort of cannonballs down there into the final notch of the blade. And you can see it rests in between the tang of the blade right here and the end of the spine right here. So it stops both the positive and negative force, the negative force being on the spine, which is stopped by the metal, you can see, stopping the notch right there. And the positive force is stopped by the very end of the bar, as you can see right there. You can literally see it working as just a piece of metal, sandwiching itself in between both parts of the tang of the blade. Very simple. Now, you could pull on this with your finger, but it, it, that would be extremely uncomfortable. So they give you a split ring or a key ring or some kind of device. You could put a, a paracord lanyard on there or something. You could put anything on there if you want. You just need more leverage to comfortably disengage that locking mechanism just to lift it above so you can free the blade. That's pretty much it. It's extremely simple, very similar to a lockback. The main difference being it's not recessed within the handle, so there's nothing to depress back here. If this were a lockback, you'd be able to depress this to bend it upward, but because there's no space in there, it's lit literally right on top of the handle right there. You have to lift it up at the very business end of the locking mechanism in order to free the blade. Now, what are the series of notches for? I don't know what the middle ones are for. I don't think it's necessary. I, mean, I think it just, it's just—it's kind of like a half stop in a lockback knife or something. It just allows you to adjust your position on the knife itself so you don't cut yourself as easily, so it doesn't freely move around. Uh, for such a long knife that has no thumb studs, I guess that's kind of... It kind of makes sense, but I do know what the first notch is for. That's to keep the knife retained inside the handle, so it can't just accidentally shake out. There's no way this thing's going to shake out on you. It's just way too tight because of those notches in there. So there's a very distinct click, 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 snap. Really cool. Very iconic. Kind of a crude design, but it's strong enough. I don't see this thing ever disengaging on you. Under normal use and even hard use, I do not see this disengaging. I hear very good things about this locking mechanism, but these days, lockbacks are basically just better. They're easier to disengage. You don't need to pull up on them like this. Not that it's uncomfortable or anything, but... It's a very crude, kind of primitive locking mechanism, but it's cheap to produce, it works good enough, it's iconic, it's classic, it's very interesting. So let me just compare this side by side to a lockback, Cold Steel Voyager old model, right here. But as you can see, similar, it's along the spines, it's a little bit shorter, but you just have to depress it within the handle and then it frees the blade. And class works exactly the same, only you're lifting it from here. If I were lifting the lock back from here, the same thing would happen. But anyway, I'll just show you that real quick. That is the class block explained.